Right, that's what astrology is saying. Only one moon, that's what uh, astrology says, that there is one moon. So these two moons, it may not have an effect on astrology. Let's go to doctor. Let's go to Umar Sharif. Uh, Umar, religious beliefs have hinged around one moon. A lot of religious beliefs. And uh, now we have found two additional moons. Will their presence in the sky, will it change religious beliefs? Or do you think it will challenge, not change, it will probably challenge religious beliefs now? Because all along you believe that there's one moon and many religious beliefs have been associated with that one moon. But now two moons, do you think that will challenge religious beliefs? Do you think it could change? Uh, well, actually it won't. It won't challenge because even with the recent discovery, yeah. it is said there is just one moon yeah. and two pseudo satellites okay two dust moons right let us not get confused yeah they themselves are not saying three moons yes they're saying there is one moon and two pseudo satellites or yeah. two dust moons right and what is a moon according to the definition that which you can see yeah you know there is a no moon day there is a new moon day yeah. you know and then you get to see that there's a day of conjunction and after that you see the different phases Correct. If you want to you know in our in mm. our school times and even now nowadays you might have seen little children if the mother wants to feed the baby the, she shows the you know nila moon, nila yeah. nodo nila nodo <laughs> uh, akashna nodo you yeah. see the moon now the moon has to be sighted yeah. that is the moon and if something right. like as hazy and phasey which is not even been seen yeah. how does it even fulfill the definition of being called as the moon yeah. Yes, dust moon, just because it is orbiting around. Right. But the definition of the moon itself is something which shows the time. Yes, alun ka anil ahila kul hiya mawaki tu linna si wal hajj. The Quran says that. The, yeah. the meaning of this is, people come and ask you about the faces of the moon. Right. Tell them it is the calendar for you which yeah. shows you the time period mm. in those times even today you know yeah. most of us you know all the cultures we look at the moon to identify the lunar month yes and the lunar month gives you the exact months actually yeah. 12 months yeah and mm. of course the one year 365 days is the revolution of the earth around the sun yeah that is giving you the solar year yes but the real year according to what we and most of the even the Hindu uh, tradition they follow is the lunar month yeah. and the lunar year 12 months yeah. and some yeah. of them have 13 months yeah. so all of these things we have so by definition a moon is something which has to do a purpose yeah one is it is going to tell you the time period now the hazy and the phasey moon doesn't show us the time period yeah. so it really doesn't serve the purpose of being uh, you know useful to man of yeah. course there's one thing that I can say nothing is created in this world without a purpose right even absolutely. that hazy thing has got a purpose yeah. which might not be understood by us now absolutely we yes. do believe it has got its own significance yeah. but it is known at this time yeah we respect that uh, hazy moon also yes, absolutely yeah so, yes uh, Omar I'm sure you've been moved by many Hindi songs I, I don't know how I mean whether you've seen heard or whether you're actually moved but definitely some sort of effect uh, the moon has had a phenomenal effect on poets, on lyricists, on composers. They look at it hanging there in the sky, in the night sky, and it has an amazing effect on them. They've come out with so many beautiful um, uh, poems and prose about it. So exactly. do you think that will change now in any way? You have just said the right thing. Yeah. I mean, the poets see, look at it, and they are like marveled by the beauty, yes. and then they start writing. Yeah. And same thing with the kids. They have to see, and that's when they say, this is a moon. Yeah. But for a thing, a gaseous state, which is not seen at all with the human yeah. eye. Yeah. So where is the question of they getting you know, uh, inspired, you know, inspired yeah. or they getting really amazed by the beauty yeah. of it? I mean, it is only the scientific committee and your community has yeah. to you know, say that we have discovered yeah. a gaseous state of yeah. a thing, which we have named it as a pseudo satellite yeah. or a dust uh, okay. moon. moon -like object. So the yeah. thing is, they have given the name as moon. Correct. And therefore, we are talking about this subject as to is that a moon or not. Mm. It is something which is orbiting. See, there was a time when we were giving names to other uh, celestial bodies yeah. like meteors and comets Absolutely, and all these yes. things. We are given mm. a name. Yes. I mean, all that moves in the sky is not moon, isn't it? Yes. So similarly, probably in my humble opinion, they should have coined it with another name other than association with the moon itself. Right. Absolutely. Because I don't get to see it. 
and the children don't get to see and the poet for all that we know he's not going to hunt around and he's not going to find it either find it yes but it won't be visible in the sky at all that's right uh, but umar do you think there are certain beliefs which we have god for instance we still believe that there is something about this concept of god whether it is a form or whether it is a spirit or whatever we still believe that it's there now in the case of this moon there are two moons which has been proved that they are there but we cannot see it but despite that do you think people will still uh, or other poets or artists or uh, singers you still think they could come up it will influence them in a certain way or do you think the single moon's influence is much more than what new objects which will appear in the sky see the description again going by the description of the moon itself yeah uh, the quran says we have created the sun as shams the yeah. word used for the sun is shams right which is like a diya yeah diya means something which is burning right a burning like a candle right. it is burning yes and again when is uh, when the quran is talking about kamar kamar is for the uh, moon the yeah. word uh, kamar is for the moon he says it is the one which gives nura nura means it gives light right so the job of the moon is to emit light light yes so that is the first and fundamental definition of what a moon is so that is according to the quran right. and having said that when we were talking about god and all that the quran says the sun and the moon are signs of god almighty right sun and the moon you see it and you can try to contemplate over the creator yeah. look at the creations and admire the creator yeah yeah but the quran also says do not prostrate to the sun or the moon for they are creations of god right so again these two things the sun or the moon or n number Anything, of celestial yeah. bodies we consider all of these things as creations of god almighty right just like how we look at every um, you know beautiful painting yes. we look at the beautiful paintings and we reflect over the painter yeah although we do not see the painter we believe there is a very artistic painter behind Absolutely. these wonderful yes, paintings yes. similarly when we see this cosmos across the you know universe we say there is a cosmic designer the, the scientific terminology is yes. generally it's used yes. as cosmic designer and the other word if we have to give from the spiritual end we would yeah. say it is the creator the god yeah absolutely. so again every language you say uh, somebody says in sanskrit as uh, De or devaru or paramatma and again you, in uh, persian they say khuda in tamil in uh, uh, you know kadavul in kannada devaru and in arabic it is allah yeah. you know whichever language or eloha in uh, in the greek and uh, yeah. jehovah in greek so all these names are just talking about one entity one supreme being creator right absolutely supreme being yeah. who is unseen for today yes yeah yes absolutely let's go to umar uh, final words umar will it change beliefs if it is proved that there have been effects on the planet by these two objects in the future if scientists discover that there have been some sort of effects on the planet uh, will a new moon or two new moons change beliefs do you think that's a possibility uh well um to, to be very frank uh, in aspects where the quran has remained silent yeah uh it it just says there is a possibility for having another moon yeah. because the quran does not say you cannot have another moon yes. so in case if there is a discovery in case which is not happened now yes. because as you rightly said we have to be very careful with the nomenclature absolutely so just because sun is a star we don't call sun as a star yes in the sense yes. if i have to teach my son about sun and the moon yeah. i will not say don't call it as sun call it as star yeah. because we are very very particular about what it has to be called as yes. similarly just because a gaseous state is moving around or orbiting around the uh, earth being quick in calling it as a moon in itself has to be very carefully watched Absolutely. i think um, as of now there is no issue with that and even yes. if at all there is a second and the third moon i think there's it's not going to affect the it's same not yeah affect.